Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge, and happy birthday to the to Disney Plus. It's uh, one year today that it officially launched on uh, November 12th, uh, 2019. Uh, who knew that we'd have so much time sitting at home <laughs> to be able to watch so much Disney Plus? So uh, this means I've done a year's worth, full as of yesterday, a full year's worth of Disney Plus Everyday Challenges, and we're only scratching the surface. I still have two more years left on my subscription. <laughs> so we're going to see how far we get with that. We're going to try to keep going. But today we have, uh, you're here to talk about Elena of Avalor, the series. Uh, there's two seasons. I believe there's supposed to be three eventually. There might be one currently you know, airing. Uh, but Disney Plus currently only has two seasons from 2016 to 2017. Uh, again, the, the idea of a, that's a weird gap though, if there's going to be a third season. Uh, there are movies um, that also, there's a series of shorts that are on Disney Plus as well. The weird thing is that when I when I, I first started the first episode, they did a deep dive on like this whole backstory about her being trapped in an amulet and her family trapped in a painting and there's evil witch or something. And I honestly, I, like, wouldn't that have been in a movie? If so, what's the name of that movie, and why isn't why isn't it on Disney Plus? So yeah, I went looking for it, and there's like I said, there's only two things that are named Elena of Avalor. Uh, maybe on my list, it's just not using that that term, and it's just you know there are movies, The Secret Life of Serenus, uh, Adventures in Valestrea, and Discovering the Magic, and Scepter Training with Zuzo. I, like, I don't know if those are, it seems to be a series of things. Those, those might be the shorts. I, I don't know. So, um, yeah, I would think that all that drama building up to what this is, uh, making her the uh, queen princess of Avalor, uh, would have been in a movie. Uh, eventually, I guess we'll run across it. I have no idea. Uh, but it's currently not properly named here. Anyway, this is a uh, 3D animated uh, series. Um, like I said, two seasons so far. Uh, they've all run about 25 minutes each or so. And uh, it's the story of Elena and her sister Isabella and her family that has survived after her being trapped in an amulet for 41 years or something. And uh, she's now in charge, well, she's been given the task of taking charge of the city of Avalon. Well, um, turns out she's only 16 and she's too young, even though she's been around for over 40 years in an amulet. Uh, that means that she has to appoint people to be her advisors and help sort of say, hey, well, you know what? You made a bad decision. We're going to overrule that. Uh, so advisors in sort of a, I guess, Senate, the House of Representatives kind of thing, but a monarchy. So, uh, yeah, that's that's basically the task of the first of the first episode. The second episode, she has to entertain a foreign dignitary from a fictional country that is like Japan. This Avalon is like Spain, uh, and the dignitary comes from Japan, but it's his their leader, their representative is uh, portrayed by George Takei. Takei, sorry, George Takei. Sorry, George. Uh, he even gets to do an obai at one point, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, this is, by the way, I could go through this list of uh, names. Um, Amy, Carrero, Amy Carrero plays uh, Elena. Um, Jenna Ortega plays her little sister. Uh, and then there is, I went through IMDb and I, I found everybody who does a voice. It's a who's who of Latin stars, uh, actors, uh, seriously, most I have to admit I, I have never heard of because they probably are hugely popular in the Latin um, television networks and things that movies and TV shows and soap operas and telenovelas and everything else. They're probably huge. Uh, but, you know, there's other actors that we know um, that, like, uh, let's see, let me, find, let me find here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lou Diamond Phillips. Uh, Chris Parnell plays uh, Flying Jaguar apparently. Uh, but yeah, uh, Jane Fonda shows up at some point. Uh, 
gosh, there's so uh, Jess Harnell. Uh, yeah, there's oh Mario Lopez again. It's a who's who. If you are a Latin American star and, or, or just a Latin star whatsoever, and you've not made an appearance on Elena of Avalor, you need to talk to your agent because I think everybody gets a shot at this point, and it's pretty great, especially if you you love that uh, those actors. So. This is obviously meant for little kids. Uh, they learn little lessons about responsibility and making good decisions when under pressure. So uh, Elena is a, an amazing role model for them. Uh, there's some bits of humor that adults will find funny, um, but for the most part, like the oh my, just little references to things that uh, normally wouldn't have. So. Uh, in little things, little, little kids wouldn't get. But uh, yeah, this is meant for the very young crowd. And uh, it, it's, it doesn't talk down to them. I, I, I was happy that it wasn't like, it's not Wiggles level. It's not uh, Blue's Clues level. It, it's, it's Elena Smart, she's capable, and she has a good group of friends and family around her that support her. And uh, she, she comes through through for them, and they come through for her. There is a cousin who is working to undermine her, uh, and he's sort of wanting to take control and uh, show that he is the better um, leader for this country. But, uh, you know, you get that kind of drama with uh, with these things, so it would be really boring if everybody all got along. So, yeah, this is a, it's a, it's a very cute, very popular... Uh, um, I've, seen, I've seen, her, seen her at Disneyland, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's very cute, very popular series, and uh, movies, shorts, and this regular uh, series. So uh, if it's the kind of thing that uh, you think you'd get into, um, go for it. Uh, if As an adult, if you don't have kids, it honestly might just be creepy if you if you just watched it on your own. I have no idea. But if, again, if you're an adult and you just want to see and hear all of your favorite Latin stars appearing in this series, then go for it. You know? Uh, but it's, it's definitely family friendly and uh, that's all I can really say it's a it, it could be a lot worse but uh, I, I can't see that's the kind of thing that I'm going to be watching because you know, it's it's not aimed at me but uh, I can tell when something would be bad for, for kids or annoying to watch as an adult and this is not it it's good so uh, let's pick, well technically this was the first episode of the new year, of the new year Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. So we're gonna pick the second one now. 476. 476, ooh. That is in the S range, pretty sure. Yeah, oh. Oh, okay. Hmm. This is uh, an anthology series of shorts, aptly named Short Circuit. So, I don't know how many there are. Depending on how many there are, we might watch uh, a few of them, because they're shorts, they won't take long. Or if there's just enough to not just <laughs> suck up my entire day, we'll watch all of them. So, Short Circuit, an anthology series on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. We'll see you back here tomorrow with that. See you then.